the previous video, we derived some general expressions for the change in entropy of an ideal gas. We will continue talking about ideal gas in this video. We are going to look at what those equations mean and how we can get insights as to the change in entropy for particular situations for an ideal gas. And we will also look at uh, how to write expressions for isentropic processes that an ideal gas undergoes. And uh, it's important to remember that whatever we speak about in this video as well as what we did in the previous video is only applicable to ideal gases. And uh, it's, it's a sort of, uh, it's very easy to get carried away and use it for other substances, but uh, they are not applicable to other substances. They are only applicable to ideal gases. And it's very important to remember that even more important than remembering the expressions that we wrote down. It's okay to not remember them as long as we can derive them, but it's very important, it's more important to remember that they are only valid for ideal gases. So we'll continue from where we left. We derived the expression for delta S of an ideal gas Uh, we said this is equal to Cv uh, times log T2 over T1 uh, plus R log uh, P2 over P1. And uh, this is uh, for Cv uh, being more or less constant, right? Only, um, sorry, this should be. Um, this is for, I need to change the marker. So we wrote uh, delta S equals CV times log of T2 by T1 plus R log V2 by V1 uh, for an ideal gas where the specific heat at constant volume is more or less constant, doesn't really vary with temperature, at least in the range that we are considering. And so we could pull it out of that integral that had Cv times dt by t. And only then we could write it in this way, all right? And remember that R is the specific gas constant, not the universal gas constant, but the specific gas constant. So um, we also wrote that uh, this is equal to Cp times log T2 over T1 minus R log P2 over P1. And uh, let's look at these expressions a little more closely and see whether we can derive insights into the change in entropy. So let's assume that, for example, we're talking about two systems uh, of the same ideal gas uh, that are at the same temperature but occupy different specific volumes. Obviously, their pressures are different, right? So if they are at the same specific temperature, then this term is 1 and so therefore this term goes out. And the change in entropy then is R times log of V2 over V1. That is, the gas with the higher specific volume has the higher entropy, right? Uh, or in other words, if I have an ideal gas and I manage to increase its specific volume without changing its temperature, then I will increase its entropy. And obviously, um, I can do that only if I change the pressure, but um, this is an expression that relates the change in entropy to the change in specific volume if there is no contribution from this term, right? Similarly, if um, I, I hold the temperature constant, I do an isothermal process, in other words, uh, then the contribution from this term goes out and I observe that the entropy decreases as the pressure increases. So which means when I pressurize an ideal gas, I am increasing, uh, I am decreasing its entropy at constant temperature of course, right? So if there is a change in temperature, then I need to evaluate the entire term. And uh, uh, so this is an insight that we get from uh, the equations that we wrote down. Uh, let's do one step further and say uh, what happens in isentropic processes. Um, as we recall, isentropic processes, the entropy remains constant and delta S equal to zero. Essentially, these are reversible adiabatic processes 
and um, so I can write uh, CV log T2 over T1 plus R log V2 over V1 as 0. Um, in other words, I can write a log of T2 over T1 is equal to minus R by CV log V2 over V1. This is a log term in the sense that I can then take the multiplicand uh, to the power. So, I can write this as uh, log T2 over T1 equals a log of V2 over V1 to the power minus R by CV, right. So, which means I can write this as log V1 over V2 to the R by CV, right. <coughs> and uh, if I have log on both sides, so I can write this as T2 over T1 equals V1 over V2. Um, I can write this as R over CV, uh, R over CV. So in other words, I can write T1, V1, R over CV equals T2, V2, R over CV, right. Uh, I can write this in a more compact way to say that T times V by to the R to the CV is a constant. And this is something that we might be familiar with, with what we studied in 11th and 12th class or prepare, preparing for JEE, but there are uh, so many assumptions that make this uh, true. Uh, first of all, it's got to be an ideal gas, not true for other substances. Second, we must be able to write this expression, which means that CV is more or less constant or has a weak dependence on temperature within the temperature range that we are considering. If we were not able to pull that CV out of the integral, then we cannot write this and we cannot write this either. So um, it's important to remember that what we are writing here is very specific and it's not generally applicable. So it's up to us to justify its use if we do want to use it. And in general, we cannot use it, right? So, um, and then we can write TV uh, by R to the CV is equal to constant. We know that uh, CP minus CV is uh, R. So I can divide it uh, as uh, CP over CV minus 1 equals R over CV. We know that this is, um, you want to use K or gamma? Gamma. K? Gamma. So this is the ratio of specific heats which we call gamma uh, minus 1 equals R over CV. So I can rewrite this as T times V to the gamma minus 1 is constant. So when we have an ideal gas whose specific heat at constant volume is very nearly constant and uh, for an isentropic process. If all these three conditions are satisfied, then I can write T V to the gamma minus 1 is equal to constant. Similarly, I can take the other expression uh, which is um, here uh, C P log T2 minus T1 minus R log P2 by P1. We can take that here and write uh, for delta S equal to 0, uh, we can write uh, C P log T2 over T1 equals uh, R log P2 over P1 and uh, log T2 over T1 equals log P2 over P1 power R to the Cp and uh, so we can write T2 over T1 equals P2 uh, by P1 
the R over C P. <coughs> so, uh, we can write this as P 1 by P 2 minus R by C P. So, here is okay. So, I can write as uh, P 1 T 1 P 1 minus R over C P equals T 2 P 2 minus R over C P and uh, so it is, it is in other words T times P minus R to the C P is a constant. Um, again recalling that C P minus C V equals R um, 1 minus C V over C P equals R by C P. This is 1 minus 1 by gamma uh, equals R by C P. So, I can substitute this T P to the minus um, of 1 by gamma minus 1 equals to constant. Um, then uh, we can write this as uh, T P to the gamma minus 1 by gamma is equal to constant. So, again this is for an ideal gas whose uh, C P value does not change by much and that gas undergoes an isentropic process. So, again um, only if it is an ideal gas, only if C P is remains constant and only for an isentropic process we can write T P to the gamma minus 1 by gamma equal to constant where gamma is the ratio of specific heat. So, let us continue and write down the results that we obtained. Uh, we said uh, T times V to the gamma minus 1 is constant. Uh, another way of writing this was uh, that T times P gamma minus 1 by gamma is a constant. And so, uh, this we said will work for an ideal gas undergoing an isentropic process. Um, remember that uh, this is an isentropic process which means a reversible adiabatic process. This is not an isothermal process, not um, an isobaric process, uh, not for example also a polytropic process. It is got to be an isentropic process um, which means reversible adiabatic process and um, <clears throat> it is got to have C p and C v uh, as constants. Um, Remember that for this we said C V is constant and for this C P is constant, but they are really one and the same because we know that for an ideal gas C P minus C V is a constant, the gas constant and so C P if it is constant C V has to be constant and vice versa. So, if C P C V are constant, uh, it is an isentropic process of an ideal gas, we can write uh, either of these two expressions which means that if I divide one by the other, um, I can get um, v to the gamma minus 1 by p to the gamma minus 1 by gamma equal to constant um, or in other words we can write v by p um, to the 1 by gamma, gamma minus 1 is constant or in other words um, v by P to the 1 by gamma is constant or P times V to the gamma is constant. So, um, this is an expression that involves T and V, expression that involves T and P and this is an expression that just involves P and V without involving temperature. And so, we have got all possible combinations uh, among P, V and T 
which are the most commonly measured variables, especially when we are dealing with ideal gases. And so uh, we have a way to work with any two known variables if we have an ideal gas. Again, recall how easily we learned this when we were in 11th or 12th or when we were preparing for JEE, but uh, now we understand the assumptions that went behind these expressions and it's import more important to remember the assumptions and the limitations rather than remembering these expressions, which could always be derived if necessary. There has been a small sign uh, correction. So this has got to be T P to the one minus gamma by gamma and not um, gamma minus one by gamma as we wrote earlier. And uh, so uh, when we carry this over, uh, here it becomes one minus gamma, right? And uh, so so this is uh, And when we divide one by the other, then we get uh, V to the gamma minus one by one by P to the gamma minus one by gamma is equal to constant. And from here I can get uh, V by one by P to the one by gamma. Something is wrong here. Yes, that's okay. Is equal to constant because I'm raising it to a constant power, so there's also a constant. And so from this, I can write P V to the gamma is constant. So in the next video, we're going to talk about um, the isentropic processes and why we look at isentropic processes and how non isentropic processes. Uh, result in lost work or rather how entropy generation destroys the work uh, that can be done and that's what we're going to do in the next video.